Coach Husky has started a new journey in his career and is switching sports to basketball as he will be taking over the Northern Illinois Huskies as their brand new head coach. The Huskies are one of the worst ranked teams in the MAC, and with no players rated over a 68 overall, this is going to be a tough rebuild. Coach Husky and his team would travel to Cedar Falls, Iowa as they would be opening up his first season taking on the Northern Iowa Panthers on the road. The Huskies got off to a quick start with some great ball movement that would open up the three point shot for them and it would help them get out to an early seven point lead over the Panthers. That wouldn't last for long though as Northern Iowa would claw their way back into this one and would take the lead back, and the two teams would keep trading leads as time started winding down here in the first half. But it would be Northern Iowa who would get the last bucket on second chance points to take the lead headed into halftime. Expectations were low for Coach Husky and his team this season, but that didn't mean he wanted to lose his first game as coach here at NIU. But the tide was starting to turn in favor of the Panthers here in the second half. The Huskies were doing a good job of keeping it close, but their perimeter defense was allowing easy three-pointers for Northern Iowa, and it was really starting to hurt them as the Panthers kept extending their lead with these wide open shots. Senior Becca Mitchell would hit a three late to bring it down to a single digit deficit for the Huskies, but it was too late as Northern Iowa would walk away with a victory in Coach Husky's debut. The losing would continue as the Huskies would drop a game to UMass and would start the year 0-3 after losing to Cal Poley. Coach Husky would finally get his first win on the road against Indiana State, but that would be his only win through his first six games of the season. Winning this game would be tough for the Huskies as they traveled to South Bend to take on the 19th ranked Fighting Irish of Northern Dame. The Huskies only had one win in the entire first month of their season, and it was more than likely that they would start out the month of December with a loss in this matchup as well. It wasn't until under a minute to go in the first half that the Irish would stretch their lead out to double digits over NIU, and coming out of the locker room, they had all the momentum still and were not going to let up on the Huskies here at home. NIU's offense was having a hard time scoring any points at all so far in the second half tonight, as it took almost two minutes for their first bucket, and down by 24 and counting, it was clear to everyone that the Huskies were extremely unevenly matched up against the number 19 in the nation as they just wanted to get this game over with and head back to DeKalb as soon as possible. The offense started coming alive a little bit more near the end of the second half and started knocking down some shots they were having trouble with earlier this game, but it was too little too late as Notre Dame would beat them handedly 73-51. to Despite the ugly loss, NIU signed their first recruit and three-star point guard Josiah Hobbs and then surprised everyone by signing four-star Mr. Basketball point guard Xavier Zuzak as well. So even though the Huskies may not have won a single game in the entire month of December, they at least had some help coming in for the next season to hopefully improve upon this record. First game of conference play for the Huskies, and they would drop it to Western Michigan and would follow it up with three more losses as well, as they were looking to get their first conference victory against their rivals at home now. This first season was not off to a good start, so hopefully a win here today could start to turn things around for the Huskies, as they still currently only have a single win in their entire season so far near the end of January. Part of the problem is Coach Husky is getting acclimated still to coaching basketball instead of football, which he is used to, as he and his team seem to be struggling making halftime adjustments against teams coming out into the second half in games this year. Most of the games they've played this year, minus a few outliers, they've stayed competitive or even led at the end of the first half, but by the time the second half rolls around, they start to fall behind and that is when they fall apart as a team. Hopefully that is not the case here today, as the Huskies have been staying in this one and trading leads with the Cardinals all first half long, and they would actually head into half time with a one point lead over their rivals. But right away in the second half, we could already see the Huskies start to fall apart as the first thing they would do would be giving up an easy and one basket inside the paint. And their defense just seemed to be non-existent this half as the Cardinals would keep going back to the paint for easy buckets. And this would allow for them to take what was once a one point deficit and flip it into a double digit lead over the Huskies here in the second half. As the Cardinals would hold onto that lead and take this one 55 to 47 over the Huskies at home. Finally though, NIU would get their first conference win, but that would still only put them at two wins so far in the season. The Huskies would make it three wins to start the month of February, and they were pumped up looking to make it two in a row. NIU was back at home and taking on the Bulls of Buffalo, and would get things started with a lucky shooter's bounce on this three. And the shot from behind the arc was falling early and often for the Huskies here at home tonight, as they would eventually find themselves jumping out to a double-digit lead over Buffalo here in the first half. The Bulls were trying their best to get back into this game and cut the Huskies' lead down before halftime, but NIU surprised surprisingly was doing a good job defensively throughout the first while keeping up on the offensive side of the ball as well, and their hard work on both sides of the ball in the first half would pay off for them as they would head into halftime with a 15 point lead over Buffalo. We know how susceptible the Huskies are though to blowing leads in the second half and losing their games because of it, and it wasn't looking good for them the way Buffalo was shooting the three pointer to start the second half tonight, as their mistakes would eventually catch up to them and a turnover on this inbounds pass would cost NIU their lead. Buffalo had fought hard to get
get themselves back into this game in the second half and would finally take their first lead of the night on this shot. And to make matters worse for NIU, the three ball was still raining for the Bulls in this half. NIU would finally come up with a defensive stop against Buffalo and turn this steal into two points and would take the lead right back. Up by two and on the fast break, senior Becca Mitchell would hit this huge three-pointer that would drain all the momentum out of the Bulls and NIU would hang on to finally win two straight games this season. That would be the only other game we would win this month though, as the Huskies headed into the final month of the season with only three total wins. NIU had three games left in their season, and after going one and one in the first two, we were looking to close out the season with a win over Eastern Michigan. It took almost over two minutes for a team to finally score first in this game tonight, but thankfully it did not take us that long to respond with our first bucket of the night. Eastern Michigan was one of the best three-point shooting teams in the MAC conference this season, but so far we had managed to keep their three-point shots to a minimum and had even jumped out to a seven-point lead over them. Maybe I spoke too soon though as they were going right back to the three-point shot to cut into this deficit and would eventually take the lead back over us on a fast break right before halftime. Just to make matters worse, they would hit one more three as the buzzer went off to extend their lead over us and we were now starting the second half down by four points to the Eagles on the road. Eastern Michigan didn't shoot the three as much as they would have liked to in the first half, so their halftime adjustment was to shoot from beyond the arc more in the second half, and it was starting to pay off for them as they were heating up quickly from three to start the second half. We just could not seem to get a hand in their faces quick enough to slow down any of their shots from beyond the arc, as they would keep finding the open man with their great ball movement and were shooting us out of this game. Down by 10 with only a minute to go, and they would hit one more three-pointer that would clinch this game for them, and we would drop our final regular season game to Eastern Michigan 67 to 49. That would give us a 5 and 23 overall final record for season number one, and we would be the bottom seed in the MAC conference tournament. Our first round matchup was against the Bowling Green Falcons, and I'll be honest, I was not expecting our team to make it out of the first round this year. We had a rough season where we only won five games the entire year, but that didn't mean we weren't going to come out and fight this entire game. We had a lead for a little bit, but the Falcons would tie it up with just over three minutes to go, and on their very next possession would end up missing a layup, but second chance points would give them the lead. It was nearing the end of the first half, and it already looked like our team was starting to fall apart, but thankfully we would come up with one last bucket on an offensive rebound right before halftime, and we would head into the locker room only down by seven in our first round matchup. Even though it would be tough, this was still a winnable game for the Huskies tonight, but after taking almost three minutes to score our first points of the second half, I think it's safe to say our season was over. Bowling Green was hitting shots from all over the court against us in the second half, and with an offense that didn't decide to show up in the second half until there were only three minutes remaining, our season would end with a first round blowout loss to Bowling Green. Central Michigan would take on Kent State in the MAC championship, and the Golden Flashes would win the MAC here in season one. The national championship was set between Tennessee and Memphis, where the Memphis Tigers would win it all. It was time for the offseason, and clearly, Coach Husky was on the hot seat. It also didn't help that we were losing our top player, Becca Mitchell, to graduation as well this year. Our first move this offseason was to fire our entire coaching staff and bring in brand new ones who could potentially help us a lot more. We would sign two more prospects and two star power forward, Amit Hairston, and two star shooting guard, Irv Lindsley, as we would surprisingly have a top 50 recruiting class in the country, and hopefully, these new freshmen will help us improve headed into season number two.